But it was a very how that but the segment it but it was very well made. Hi, welcome to the Silver Spleen. My name is and this is my review of Good Take Two. I missed this movie in cinemas, although I did see the first installment in cinema. And much like the first installment, I really enjoyed the opening credits of Good Take Two. They really made an impression on me. And I know that seems like kind of a weird thing to talk about, but I guess it's because I'm old enough now to see things being served up as retro that I remember as being current. But let's move on. The first segment, Lighthouse of My Life, centers around a woman struggling to find a reason and a purpose to live. Alternating between the past and the present, it stars Cheng Pei Pei as the grandmother whose words and actions influence the woman's thoughts and actions. Eric Chung, who produced the entire anthology, appears as the father. It's a light, almost airy story, and to be honest, it didn't really grab me. But that's probably because I'm so emotionally barren. But it was very well made, and, and I have to say it was a good segment, because I don't really care for Charmaine Fong, who plays the woman, but I still enjoyed it. The second segment, The Waiting, stars Edison Chen and Maria Cordero as people... Well, you know what they're doing. Venus Wong appears as... well, a woman. I don't want to tell you who her character is, because it might spoil things. Edison Chen is okay as a parolee, but he didn't really convince me that he just got out the joint, you know? Maria Cordero's performance, on the other hand, is almost too believable. It's excellent. With this segment's very commendable cinematography and use of black and white, director Clement Cheng has put me in the rather unenviable position of having to reconcile the association of Martin Scorsese's Raging Bull with Edison Chen. These are the burdens I bear. Hayward Mack directed the awkwardly titled Dance Me to the End of Youth, in which Eric Chang and Kelly Teen starring as two older people searching for something to fill in the void in their lives. Set completely in a suburb of Shenzhen, it's a nice, easy-going story that, unfortunately, comes off as an advertisement for the suburb and WeChat. Now, I don't know if WeChat really was a sponsor, because I didn't watch the end credits and look for the logo, but I really wouldn't be surprised. And, in fairness, I'm not really a fan of Hayward Mack, and I admit that seeing her name at the beginning of the segment probably colored my viewing, so to speak. But the reason I generally don't care for her films is that too often she seems to try and tell stories that are, frankly, beyond her experience. I'd have believed this story about an autumn romance much more, and probably even enjoyed it a lot more, if it had been directed by either of the two principal actors in it. The fourth and final segment is called Arrested for Shooting, and, like the first good take, this last segment is an homage to local cinema. Unlike the first one, however, I enjoyed this particular homage. It stars Choi Tin Yao as an aspiring director whose attempts at cinema verite may have very serious repercussions. Felix Wong, Dion Lam, and Sam Hoy, not that one, the other one, play his consultants. There are nods and references to a boatload of local movies, and the whole segment is fun, entertaining, and nostalgic in the best kind of way. But then Jim Chim shows up and throws a wrench into my happiness. Thankfully, he's not in very much of the segment, so I quickly got back to enjoying myself. Uh, not like that. The premise of the story, as well as its execution, are very interesting, and I really would love to see this segment expanded into a full-length feature. It was my favorite segment of Good Take Two, and maybe even of both volumes. Overall, the tone of Good Take Two is a little different than the first one, in that most of these stories are kind of subdued and calm and gentle compared with the first one. But that doesn't mean that they aren't good. They are. Besides, we all know that I have the attention span of a crack-addled chipmunk, so please don't think that these stories are boring just because I say they are. They're not. All the segments are really good, I just happen to like the last one the most. So in that sense, Good Take Two is the exact opposite of the first one. I enjoyed Good Take Two because the stories were all different, but they still kind of had some connection to them. They were all well done, the acting was really good, 
and it was nice to see things that were just a little different that weren't just commercial star vehicles with lots of people holding up watches and green tea. You know what I mean. I enjoyed it a lot, and looking back, I wish I'd had a chance to see it in cinema, but I didn't. I can easily recommend that you watch this movie, but you know what I'm also going to recommend? Don't steal it! In the description, there's a link where you can buy a copy of a Blu-ray or a DVD. I don't care if you don't buy it from there, but I do care whether or not you pay money for the privilege of seeing this and other movies. If you enjoyed this review, please let me know. If you didn't, ah, let me know. Just make sure that you have a cohesive argument. In fact, I'd settle for cohesive sentences. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. That way, more people will have subscribed. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon.